Stay right there for just a moment, Dr. Harris. Come here. <laughs> See, we have several things we want to do, starting with this. Okay. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Yes. <laughs> those are yeah, those are for you. Wow. Thank you. Oh, Look at this. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so. Oh, thank <laughs> 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 All right. Thank you. Dr. Harris, have a seat. We have a few things to say to you. And then you can come back up in the moment. All right. Um, the next thing you want to do, if I can call you all up this time. So the next thing you can have a seat. Oh, we can have a seat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the first thing I want to do is give some highlights about Dr. Harris's career. Now, I want you to know this is my version of her career. In other words, if you were to read her vita, her curriculum vitae, you would find it longer than both of my arms and legs and my entire height. Her vitae is multiple pages long, close to 20 pages. So we can't go through everything that she has done. But I've highlighted some things that I thought were important to know. First of all, she's been here at Southern for 21 years. That deserves a huge cost. But I want I've summarized some things for you to know about Dr. Harris. First of all, she has degrees of Bachelor of Arts in Communication, and it is from Southern Adventist University. She has a Master's of Library Science from Vanderbilt University. She has a PhD in Mass Communication, Journalism, Public Relations, and Information Science from the University of Tennessee in Knoxville. That was earned in 1994. And then we keep going from there. She has taught at the following. Chattanooga State Technical Community College, the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, Western Carolina University, Andrews University, Walla Walla University, and Southern Adventist University. And at Andrews, at Walla Walla, and at Southern, she not only taught, but she was chair or dean of the teaching department. And just that, she also taught at the academy level, Collegedale Academy, Forest Lake Academy, Orlando Junior Academy, right. Madison Academy, Madison. and Udua High School. Okay. <laughs> she has a number of notable accomplishments, but I just picked four that I like the best, okay? So these are by no means a summary of all her accomplishments. These are just the ones that I liked the best and picked for tonight. Uh, the first time that she was at Southern, she's had two tours of duty at Southern. And the first time she was at Southern, from 1998 to 2000, she worked under Dr. Lynn Sauls, and while working with him, helped to save this, the School of Journalism and Communication from extinction. That deserves a hand. Oh Later, as chair, she helped to negotiate the return of speech in all of our speech classes. Well, those have been taken up to the English department. She negotiated the return of speech to the communication department, where it belongs. <laughs> and, the, and she helped to grow the program from 42 majors to over 100 majors while she was chair. And then she also taught in Forest Lake, uh, sorry, sorry woo, down here. And then when she left here and she went to Walla Walla, she managed the construction of a new 10,000 square foot media center and relocated the communication department into it when it was completed. Those are just some of the highlights of things that she's done in her amazing career. She was a founding member of what we know today as the Society of Adventist uh, Communicators. Those of you who are newer don't know about that, but those of you who have been here for a while, you know how important that is, and the newer ones are gonna catch up, COVID got in the way. She has numerous awards, I can't read them all, but here's just a few. Leadership Award from the Society of Adventist Communicators for Leadership in, in Communication Education. Bridge Award from the International World Seventh-day Adventist Church for Leadership in Journalism and Communication Education. Doctoral Forum Award from the American Society for Information Science and Technology for Dissertation Research. Graduate Research Award from the University of Tennessee College of Communication. Merit, uh, Award of Merit from the Associated Church Press for News and Investigative Writing for Liberty Magazine. McDougall Award from the Association of Education and Journalism and Mass Communication. Um, at the AM, AM, AEJMC for legal, um, re for legal research for graphic news 
paper antitrust cases, and the Mark of Excellence Award from the Society of Professional Journalism for, for a series on Jerry Fowler, published in 1992. Dr. Harris has worked as a news editor and a journalist. She's been a PR consultant for the GC, for the NAD, for Florida Hospital, the City College Jail, and more, you get the idea. She's been in corporate communication, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Classic Chevy Club International. She's worked as a corporate speech writer, a healthcare specialist, a librarian, media center director, and as a book editor. She is a researcher and a scholar. She's published scores of, she's had scores of presentations and scholarly articles. She's a writer. She literally has published hundreds of articles, all right? And she's a poet. She's published dozens of poems, not just written. Them. We all write them. She publishes them. <laughs> <laughs> and she's an organist. She faithfully serves yes. from week to week in the community and at College Dale Church. And she's been a hundred a professor to hundreds, maybe even thousands of students over the course of her lifetime. Tonight, we are very pleased to honor you, Dr. Harris. <laughs> Yes, yes. Um, would you come forward? Dr. First, have Dr. Rumsey come forward. Dr. Rumsey was my boss. <laughs> <laughs> and you were almost my boss because she tried to get me to come down I here. I did. So. <laughs> and tried to steal him from Union College. More than once, I think. Well, the time just wasn't quite right, but we did make that move yeah. uh, a little while later. Well, Dr. Harris and I uh, first knew each other, I think, here in college, at Southern, as classmates, oh. studying communication. That's right. Right here in this department. <laughs> Different building, <laughs> but this department. That was a few decades ago. <laughs> well, fast forward about 40 years, and uh, I was uh, in the dean's chair by that time, and uh, it was my privilege to invite Dr. Harris to bring her rich experience that you just heard about uh, back to Southern and to join our teaching faculty full time. And uh, uh, in the years that followed, I was able to witness firsthand the quality of her devotion to her discipline and to her students. I was impressed, Dr. Harris, with the way that you took right off with the PR campaign class and made it so practical, um, immersing students in the community and, and giving them real life uh, campaign experience. Still doing the campaign class? Yeah. All right. Yes. <laughs> and uh, in speech classes, her, uh, her nurturing manner has been an encouragement to so many fledgling student speakers over the years. Uh, doc, Dr. Harris was ahead of her time in understanding the importance of the internet. Yes. Uh, you heard about her doctoral work up at uh, the University of Tennessee, and I believe your dissertation was on the uh, internet and related uh, aspects of that. And I know that uh, even now, she uh, uses the social media to share inspiring thoughts, images, um, and reports of what students are doing, cheering on the accomplishments of the students right here, all of you at Southern. So we've kind of come full circle here at Southern Heaven right now, uh, starting out as students and then finishing our careers in this uh, wonderful learning community. And it's been a privilege for me to have uh, studied with you and then years later to have served with you. And what? didn't we sing together? That's right, in the Southern Chorale. <laughs> then we that toured and that, sang. That, that was the group before, long before he can tour. It's called the Southern Chorale. <laughs> there are pictures to prove that we were. Yes. That's right. So. Um, Congratulations to you, and before I leave, I want to bequeath unto you a stack of official reporter's notebooks. Yeah. <laughs> you can use those to uh, journal your retirement. <laughs> it should last you at least 
I'll be reporting. <laughs> I want to share a few words from uh, Dr. John Keats, who oh. wished he could be here tonight, but could not. But he wrote these words for you, so I'll just share. Pam Harris, Pamela Mays Harris. When I think of Pam, I think of many things. Pam is an organist. She's a writer. She's a communicator, a teacher, professor. She's a wife and mother. She's a caretaker, a creator. When I was a member of Southern's English department, Pam developed the expository writing course for the department. When Pam invited me to transfer from the English department to the SJ&C, I was delighted to join while continuing to teach some English classes. What I appreciate very much about Pam is her gift of affirmation. When I worked with Pam in preparing for a SACS accreditation visit, Pam gave me assignments, and when I completed them, she gave me abundant positive affirmation. Her affirmations made me want to receive more assignments. <laughs> when Pam was head of the SJC, she consistently made my teaching a joy through her affirming what I was doing. What a gift. As I look back over my years as a student, I think of four teacher professors from whom I learned the most. All four shared their gift of affirmation. So I would like to rename Pam. Let's name her Pamela Mays Affirmer Harris. Okay? I was delighted when we were able to persuade Pam to leave Western Carolina University and return home to the SJNC. May Pam stay close to home and enjoy a long and joyful life in retirement. John Keats. Now we have several gifts. Okay, I am going to present you these. These are just gifts that are representative of different parts of your life. So you've already heard a snapshot of Dr. Harris. And so this gift is representative of one very important part of your life. So oh, I open this. Yes. Everybody wants to know, so just open it up. <laughs> I recognize the brand name. <laughs> Monet, these are brooches. Oh. <laughs> a brooch with the, the treble clef for her organ and uh, I think, what is that, an eighth note, quarter note? I don't know. Uh, that, and she loves brooches. And it says, never forget the difference you Thank you. Well, we heard we heard a lot about Pam being a wordsmith, uh, both the spoken and written word. I'll get this. Well, the spoken and written word, but there's something else about Pam. She's elegant. Yes. She likes to find the things in life. <laughs> Please stand up and show everyone your outfit again. Oh, no. <laughs> Always the color coordinated glasses, um, the reading glasses, etc. <laughs> right? So we're going to miss that around here. So we decided to combine those attributes and your love for writing with something nice and precious and delicate for you to write with. <laughs> you can open up your gift. Thank you. You're quite the oh. wordsmith. <laughs> I recognize this. <laughs> it says Levenger. Do you know Levenger? <gasps> this is a fountain pen that matches my ballpoint pen. <laughs> same, same one. We love you, Pam. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Wait, don't sit yet. Oh, I have another gift. So this gift, Dr. Harris, I have a few other words to say later. But this gift represents the many times that I've come to you 
and asked you to sign things because of your special skill. Oh. <laughs> so you can never have enough pens, especially skins, pens that bring out the beauty of writing such as you have. Oh, look at this box. It matches. <laughs> awesome. Can you see this? That looks pretty elegant. A calligraphy. Oh. Yeah. Very special, thank you. Well, I too come bearing gifts, so um, wow. those of you who've been in both of our offices know that we share a love of um, older things, I guess, uh, antiquity, but uh, take a look. You may recognize it. Antiquity. Well. <laughs> antiquity. Oh my goodness. Ah. Oh, 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 oh. I collect yeah. old types. Right. Yeah. I used to have them all across the counter mm -hmm. in my office, and then I got too many. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have one too, so we share that in oh, common. Thank you. But uh, this reminds us That's of our really our writing special. back in the uh, back in the day, right? I remember the sound of the clatter in the newsroom. It was music to my ears, and yeah. I'm sure you wrote many stories on a, either a manual or IBM Selectric, right? Yeah. Well, this, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So anyway, this is just to um, you know you can put pens in there or whatever. I, I, I have a new one. I can. Do that. <laughs> yeah. uh, we expect you to continue writing. Right? I expect. I know uh, it, whether it's on the, 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 the computer or on your phone, and even if uh, even if Elon Musk buys Twitter, he did. You know, he did. I know he's already yeah. technically bought it, but <laughs> Pam will still be there tweeting, right? Right? I probably okay. will. Unless yeah. he starts to mess with free speech. Yeah. Okay, you'll be watching. He does that. I'm watching right now already. Yeah. Thank well, you. Thank you. My comedy. So, I, I just want to tell them that it was my privilege to hire Mr. Room. I would not be here if it wasn't for oh. this woman. Yeah, for good. Good hire. <laughs> Few more words of tribute. Oh goodness. Oh. <laughs> Hi. How are you? This is one of my students. <laughs> That's true. Um, I just want to share a little anecdote about Pam. Uh oh. Drove, Introduce yourself here. Uh, I'm Andy Nash. <laughs> Uh, I drove very fast here to make it on time. Uh, you're worth it. And uh, and I was both a student and a colleague of yes. Dr. Harris. Um, in 1989, when everything fell apart here and you three came in, these new professors, um, I was uh, briefly a public relations major. Um, it didn't really take for me because I wasn't very good at relationships. But, uh, <laughs> after class one day, uh, Dr. Harris said, Andy, can you come to my office, please? And she always spoke methodically and cheerfully, and I wasn't afraid. When I got to Dr. Harris's office, she said, I want you to edit the collegiate quarterly lesson on the Song of Solomon. And I took that seriously, that you wanted me to do that. <laughs> um, not because I had a girlfriend, which I usually didn't have throughout college. Um, <laughs> Did I think you asked me to edit on Song of Solomon, but you saw something in me before I did. Has that been true for any of you, with some of your teachers? I wasn't a very good public relations major, but I was going to be a better journalism major, which I switched to second semester. After he took my PR. Well, that, <laughs> that, just, that just revealed what wasn't inside of me. <laughs> so, Pam, uh, Dr. Harris was a great encourager to me. 20 years later, we got to teach together, and I saw you doing the exact same thing, and I know that you have with many of these students here, the great affirmer, great encourager, and you have meant a great deal as a professor, as a colleague, and as a neighbor to Cindy and yes, me, neighbors. and as a friend. 
Um, the best teachers don't teach material. The best teachers teach students, teach people. And that's why you are the best. So thank you. I have just a few remarks. Um, when I think of you, Dr. Harris, I think in terms of tidbits, scenes, and sound bits. And I'm just going to share with everyone just a few of those. I think about the first phone call that we had together. I actually placed it from Andrews University and said, because of what I had heard about you, I called you out of the blue and said, um, though we've never met, I believe that we are sisters in suffering and I wanted to meet you. So that was our beginning and then we became fast friends before we ever met in person. Um, I think about the encouragement and the advice that you gave my first year in particular, the many times that it came. The positive that you see, you always see the positive in everyone. And no matter what someone brings to you, you find something positive out of that. And that's something that comes to mind. I think about the twinning episodes that we've had, the times we showed up in the office and just happened to be wearing the same color blazer, sometimes a blazer and scarf, and once a blazer, scarf, and pin, <laughs> all that kind of matched. I think about the litanies that you've written for the SJC mm -hmm. for our many programs and the beauty of saying those litanies together or in concert with one another. I think about an utterly grueling day that I had and late that night dropped by your office only to find Dr. Joy and you're already there detoxing in your office. <laughs> <laughs> and between tears, a prayer session and a spontaneous communion service, all of our episodes, all of our problems took, uh, took flight and left that night in, on the wings of laughter. Like wheat thins and yes, and grape juice. juice. <laughs> wheat thins and grape juice, yes. Um, I think about, don't take that too seriously, pastors, but yes. <laughs> um, I think about your calligraphy and the beauty that it's brought, the creative ideas, including the themes and titles for our SJC annual Christmas photo, and what to do for that. I think about you winning the game of hide and seek. <laughs> she hid and we saw it so thoroughly that we never did find her. She had to come out and reveal herself. That was a faculty that was retreat. A faculty, a faculty retreat, yeah. I think about the fun with your students. This, I believe, speeches and the many things you pour, especially into your speech students that you enjoy, as well as those that, um, that work on the projects for the community. I think about the time you gave that hug. I mean, this is just an example of many things that you've done for students, but that hug to Rachel Beaver that literally carried her through to graduation and kept her from leaving the SJC. I think about coming around the corner and seeing you perched atop your desk, cross leg, primly teaching a class on speech. This is Dr. Harris, and there are so many things that we can appreciate and all think, thank you for. Right now, students, there's a book going around, and you can, are welcome to share your thoughts and tributes in that as it goes around. I want to thank you for your unwavering support for me as Dean. I want to thank you for your advocacy for causes and for people, which has been a blessing to this very day. You yes. read me, right? I do. Okay. And thank you for your words of affirmation and your many prayers. I'm going to miss having you right across the hall. Uh -huh. we, that's been a thing to be able to just drop over there and see what you're wearing for the day. <laughs> going to miss that, but I'm so thankful that you're going to have time to spend time with things that really matter with less interruptions. Things like doing research, playing the organ, writing more poetry, spending time with your mom, yeah. and being warm with your family. And I'm glad to know that in the fall we'll still see you because Dr. Harris is going to be teaching a couple speech classes for us. So her service yeah. with the SJC will continue. But with all our hearts tonight, we thank you for your time, your service, and the dedication that you've had. And we wanted to honor you. Now, my question to you is if I gave you one minute, as in 60 seconds, would you like to respond? <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> Wow, this was so unexpected. And I said, these people are so sneaky. <laughs> All of this was hidden. I thank Andy for coming. I had the privilege of submitting writing to him when he was the editor of the Adventist Review. And he was my editor. And he decided whether he was going to publish my articles or not <laughs> a good editor well it's just been such a privilege and i would probably be
crying. I don't cry very often, but I would probably be crying here from grief if my dean hadn't asked me to teach two speech classes this fall. So I have really mixed feelings. I've been grieving anyway, and yet I'm really excited to use my new instruments and wear my new pens and write with my pens. And I'm going to live life to the fullest. I don't want to rust out. I'm going to wear out. And I am so happy that all of you who were my students, my advisees, were part of my life. Your, your treasures that I always consider years afterwards. I don't forget you. I don't even forget some of your speeches. Some I do, and it's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Probably my trademark speech in speech class to my students. You know, when they're getting a little glazy eyed and a little sleepy, I'll say to one of the tall guys, Would you spot me, please? And I climb up on top of the desk, the table. So I'm up there. And it's quite a different view for me. <laughs> and uh, I say, okay, we're going to say this together. This is some of the best advice for journalists, speakers, writers, communicators. Are you ready? Say after me. No boring speeches. And then we <laughs> yell it as loud as we can yell it so it can be heard at the church. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Ferguson is like, what are they doing over at that campus? <laughs> so we do it three times at, at the top of our lungs. So my advice is to stay connected to the Lord and to always grow that relationship. Because you're going to have times of up and down. But never be boring. Never be boring. Wow. Yeah. 